do want to go ahead and show you all the internal settings of this optic. Now, please keep in mind, this is not intended to be instructional. It is just intended to show you all the variety of settings and internal features to the optic. So I still recommend that you read the manual if you do invest in this, but this will definitely kind of help orient you. Now, in case you want to know what we're currently looking at, it's just the lamp in the corner of my studio here so that there's something kind of warm and, and kind of giving you that thermal profile so it's not just a blank wall. Now, we're going to start with the left turret. So if I single press, you'll notice in the top left of the screen, it's toggling what's highlighted from white hot. Now I'm on default. So that is when I single tap the left turret. Now, when I move the turret on one of those settings, it's changing through all those different color palettes. So now we're back on white hot. If I go over to default, it's kind of some presets. So see sky, indoors, detect, forest, and back to default. Now see sky is actually one of the ones I tended to prefer just because I found the contrast to be a little less severe than the default. But it really just depends on the environment you're in. But nonetheless, just know that for example, even if I go to see sky, you can then change the different color palettes. So there is an overwhelming amount of options here. Now to make things even more complex for you, if you want to fine tune, I've now long pressed the left turret and you'll see the first thing that comes up is enhancement. So you can change everything from contrast, sharpness, brightness, of the image, gamma. So without going through all these, you can see that each one does influence the thermal image again. So now you're kind of calibrating that thermal sensor to give you the most pleasing image or to tweak it to the environment you might be shooting in. So a ton of control over this thermal sensor. Now boresight is gonna be next. And by the way, I'm just using the turret to kind of scroll and then I'm single tapping. Long holding will back you out of the current menu. So now if I know where I'm currently impacting, I will just leave my crosshair on the bullseye and then you just move this X to where the impacts are. So the left turret moves it up and down, right turret, left and right. And it is that simple. I'll roll some quick footage showing you my zeroing process with this scope and thermal scopes in general, but this made it very, very quick and effective to do so. So this has kind of been my go-to for zeroing thermal targets. I just throw some electric tape on a standard target and you can see I'm actually uh, considering that it is a thermal scope. That is a pretty tight group. So now what I'm going to do is I'll take a piece of the electric tape and I'll just put it basically where that group is. It's essentially on center. I'll make sure it's just to the right. And then I'll use the feature in the scope to move that reticle to the zero and I should be pretty much spot on now. So as mentioned here, we have that target I just showed you. You can see that little bit of electric tape above. Again, just kind of a trick of the trade I've learned over the years. And I'm just going to scroll and place that orange X over that mark that I had inspected with my initial group when zeroing this optic. So after I have it where I am pretty much set, I'll go ahead and accept those settings and you'll see my reticle will shift in place because this is a digital zero, guys. So that's all your scope is doing. Now, of course, what good is a zero if you're not gonna confirm it? So one way I know best, especially with thermal targets, hard to see, here's a steel target. It's about six inch diameter at 200 yards. And I can now ring that steel all day long consistently without missing a beat with this optic. So I'm gonna go ahead and Hold the left turret to exit so I don't accidentally change anything. Going down, you can preview everything. It's not gonna let me do that because I'm currently recording, but it will pull up windows of all the files that you've taken. Now in the very bottom left of the scope, it'll tell you how many photos and how many videos, kind of where the recorder is currently counting up. I did just format this scope prior to rolling this clip. So currently my file count is zero. Once I stop this one, the video icon will display a one next to it. So there is a compass, so you can, you can see in the top, it gives you different settings and then you can choose to calibrate it. Mine's been working great, so I'm gonna leave that alone so I don't screw it up. And then you got more settings, so you have your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which both need to be enabled in order to use the app. You can change your zero profiles, which is really nice, again, given that it has a very, very awesome quick detach mount included. You could make multiple profiles depending on which of your rifles you wanna stow this bad boy on. 
you can enable for the recordings to start based on recoil, change your units from Imperial to metric, and then here's how you format the card, which we'll talk about that later. This may actually end up being a handy feature. And then you can also default back to the factory settings. So I'm gonna long hold, it'll back me out. I'm gonna long hold again, and there you have it. Now, moving our way over to the right-hand turret, if I tap it once, it's going to perform a manual nuke function. Um, the image looks pretty decent right now, so I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell let me see if I can kind of interfere with what it's kind of calibrated to. I'm trying to make it a little bit fuzzier an image. I want to go ahead and tap that right turret and it's going to clean up any noise. So now if I long hold the right turret, it will let me choose my preset profile for when the scope powers on. So we can change it to forest, detect, etc. Um, in my opinion, I don't know why they have that there because it's so easy to switch with the other turret, but it is there and it is an option. You can change your reticle type. There is a handful of selections there, even no reticle if you just want some thermal footage. It's kind of a nice option there. And moving on, you can also change the color to what best suits your eye, which again, very nice. Oops. Didn't mean to long press. We're gonna go down to brightness, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but it does have 10 brightness settings, the 10th being bright enough in the sunlight without need for the eye cup, at least in my experience. And I don't know if, again, you'll see that, but it is a setting. And then last, there is the rangefinder function. So when you tap this, the left turret will control the height of the target so that's what I'm changing the distance is changing with it so let's pretend that this battery that is sitting on my shelf if I knew that to be two feet tall then I'm going to use the right turret to now adjust where those lines go so I'm decreasing that so if it was if that was truly a two foot target then it's saying I should be at 66.2 yards away so kind of a handy little function there now the last thing is if I just twist the right turret without going into a menu, you get a picture in picture window and you can control through the settings where you want that to be. So it can be top left, top center, or top right. I like top center. I do enjoy this. So you'll notice this is a two power magnification. I'm just gonna aim at the plug on that battery that is charging. You can go to four and then even eight power. So when I'm hunting, this is kind of nice to get a precise initial shot, and then you have the wider field of view for follow-up shots, especially hog hunting. Once you shoot, they take off. This is really, really helpful for that. And again, without diving any deeper, this was not intended to be instructional, but there you have it, just to kind of give you some exposure to all the different features and settings and functionality internally in this optic.